Today I will discuss about retinoscopic power calculation. Retinoscopy in clinical practice can be either dry retinoscopy or wet retinoscopy. The retinoscopic power may be either gross retinoscopic power or net retinoscopic power. Other parameters are working distance power, ciliary tonus power. To do calculation in retinoscopy, you need to know about these six terminologies. Dry versus wet retinoscopy. Dry retinoscopy. Retinoscopy that is performed without any cyclopragic drug is called dry retinoscopy. Wet retinoscopy. Retinoscopy that is performed after applying cyclopragic drug, drop or ointment is called wet or cyclopragic refraction. The difference of calculation between dry and wet retinoscopic power is that in wet retinoscopy, we need to subtract ciliar retinous power and working distance power where in dry retinoscopy we need to subtract only working distance power. You might be thinking why do we need to subtract working distance power or ciliar retinous power? Why need to subtract working distance power? We detect power of patient's eye in the spectacle plane but we don't perform retinoscopy from spectacle plane rather from certain distance that is called working distance typically from 67 centimeter. The power we get at 67 cm is not the same power that is required at spectacle plane. So we need to subtract the distance from spectacle plane to retinoscopy position to get power at spectacle plane. This distance can be subtracted by adding a certain power identified using the formula 100 divided by distance between spectacle plane and position of retinoscopy that is working distance in centimeter. So, if we perform retinoscopy from 67 cm, then to identify the power at spectacle plane, we need to subtract the working distance power that is 100 divided by 67 or 1.49 or 1.5 diopter. Now, why need to subtract ciliary tonus power? During retinoscopy, we need to identify patient's refractive error without accommodation being stimulated. To keep accommodation is at rest, we ask the patient to fixate 6x60 target at 6 meter. But some patients are not cooperative. Instead of focusing 6x60 target, they focus on the retinoscopic light that induced some extra converging power and retinoscopy becomes inaccurate. In hyperopic patients, due to rays focusing behind the retina, accommodation gets stimulated automatically to reduce the blur retinal image that makes retinoscopy inaccurate. To avoid stimulation of accommodation, we use cyclopragic drugs to relax the ciliary muscles so that lens becomes flat, relaxed, and amplitude of accommodation becomes zero. Due to relaxing ciliary muscles more than required, lens become extra flat which induced some extra diverging or hypermetropic power which is called ciliary tonus power. Ciliary tonus power is not same for all cycloplasics. Atropine has plus 1 ciliary tonus power, cytopentolate has plus 0.75 and humatropine has plus 0.5. Now gross versus net retinoscopic power. Gross retinoscopic power. The power we got without subtracting working distance power or ciliary tonus power is called gross retinoscopic power. Net retinoscopic power. The power we got after subtracting working distance power or ciliary tonus power in wet retinoscopy is called net retinoscopic power. Net retinoscopic power is the actual refractive error of the patient. For dry retinoscopy, net retinoscopic power equal to gross retinoscopic power minus working distance power. For wet retinoscopy, net retinoscopic power equal to gross retinoscopic power minus working distance power plus ciliary retinous power. Gross retinoscopic power can be written in three form. One, spherocylinder format. Two, meridian wise. Three, axis wise. Let's see an example. In this optical cross, vertical meridian has plus 2 and horizontal meridian has plus 1. So this power can be written in three format. 
in spare cylinder format it will be plus 2 minus 1 90 degree axis in meridian wise format it will be plus 2 at 90 degree meridian and plus 1 at 180 degree meridian in axis wise format plus 2 180 degree axis plus 1 90 degree axis all these three format indicate the same power in the optical cross now let's calculate the retinoscopic power for dry retinoscopy for example gross power is plus 2 minus 1.5 90 degree axis with working distance 100 centimeter or one diopter for dry retinoscopy the formula was net retinoscopic power equal to gross power minus working distance power now let's distribute the power meridian wise in the optical cross here plus 2 is spherical power so spherical power present in both meridian so plus 2 will be here in vertical meridian as well as in horizontal meridian minus 1.5 is cylindrical power 90 degree axis so the power will be 90 degree apart or in horizontal meridian so finally in particle meridian we have plus 2 and in horizontal meridian we have plus 0.5 now according to our formula to identify the net retinoscopic power we have to subtract working distance power that is plus one diopter let's subtract working distance power from both meridian so in particle meridian plus two minus one or the final power is plus one and in horizontal meridian plus 0.5 minus one or final power will be minus 0.5 now we got our net retinoscopic power in the optical cross let's convert this optical cross into spare cylindrical format here we have to identify two power spherical power and cylindrical power with axis for spherical power take any meridian as spherical meridian for cylinder power and axis cylinder power will be difference between cylinder meridian and spherical meridian cylinder axis will be 90 degree to cylinder meridian let's consider vertical meridian is spherical meridian so the spherical power will be plus one cylinder meridian is horizontal cylinder power will be minus 0.5 minus plus one or minus 1.5 axis will be 90 degree to cylinder meridian cylinder meridian was 180 degree or horizontal so the axis will be minus 1.5 90 degree axis one simple way to get net retinoscopic power in dry retinoscopy is find the gross retinoscopic power in spherocylindrical format and subtract the working distance power from spherical power only to get net retinoscopic power for example in this patient gross retinoscopic power was plus 2 minus 1.5 90 degree axis which is in spherocylindrical format so we can easily identify the net retinoscopic power by subtracting working distance power from spherical power only now retinoscopic power calculation in wet retinoscopy for example gross retinoscopic power is plus 4 plus 1 90 degree axis with working distance 100 centimeter after applying atropine here plus 4 is spherical power so it will be in both meridian here in vertical meridian also here in horizontal meridian also plus one is cylinder 90 degree axis so the power will be 90 degree apart here in horizontal meridian in vertical meridian we have total plus four diopter and in horizontal meridian we have total plus five diopter now according to our formula let's subtract working distance power and cilia retinas power from both meridian in vertical meridian plus 4 minus 2 that is working distance power 1 and cilia retinas power 1 for atropine in vertical meridian the total power is plus 2 in horizontal meridian plus 5 minus 2 that is plus 1 for working distance power and plus 1 for cilia retinas for atropine so in horizontal meridian we have total plus 3 diopter we identify net retinoscopic power in optical cross now let's convert it into spherocylindrical format let's consider vertical meridian is spherical 
so spherical power will be plus 2. Cylinder meridian is horizontal, so cylinder power will be plus 3 minus plus 2 or plus 1 diameter cylinder and axis will be 90 degree to cylinder meridian. Cylinder meridian was 180 or horizontal, so axis will be plus 1 90 degree axis. One simple way to identify net retinoscopic power in wet retinoscopy is find the cross retinoscopic power in spherical cylinder format then subtract working distance power and ciliary retinous power from spherical power only to get net retinoscopic power. For example, for this patient, gross retinoscopic power was plus 4 plus 1 90 degree axis which is in spherocylindrical format. So we can identify the net retinoscopic power by subtracting working distance power and ciliary retinous power from spherical power only. So, the spherocylindrical format was plus 4 plus 1 90 degree axis minus 1 that is working distance again minus 1 that is ciliary retinous power for atropine so the final power will be plus 2 plus 1 90 degree axis stay with smart optometry and study optometry smartly